some things out of your life. The devil is a liar. Anything that is coming against you in this day, the devil is a liar. On the 21st of May 2022, we came to tell the devil his place. We came to show sickness his place. We came to show affliction his place. In the bombardment, we came to tell him that this is not your place. You cannot occupy her. Jesus, to save 
him from your life to send some devils out of your life. The Bible says after that reply, the devil left Jesus. Can I prophesy over somebody that a devil is living your life? A sickness is living your life. An affliction is living your life. If only you will lift up your voice and take charge of your life, of your finances, of your family, and show the devil his place and declare that you are seated with Christ Jesus above all principalities and powers. Therefore, oh devil, get thee behind me. Go back now. Go back now. Go back. 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 Hey,
because you are allowing me to talk. It is time for you to show it its place. The devil is a liar. Many of us, we've allowed troubles to talk and talk and talk, and they become big in our life. The devil is a liar. The devil was talking. He talked, he talked, he talked. He said, do this and do that, do that, do that, do that. Dictating what Jesus could do. Then at the point, Jesus got frustrated. I need you to be provoked. I need you to be angry. I need you to be tired and sick and tired of being sick and tired. I need you to just get upset, provoked by some godly anger and show the devil his place. And when Jesus got to that realm and said and gave the devil a reply, the devil stopped talking. Today we came to silence the voice of the enemy in your life. Some small, small demons, some small, small witches, some small, small afflictions have been talking till they have become so big. They look so big. They look so overwhelming. Your problem looks like it will beat you. It will break you. It will destroy you. But it is so small before your God. And Jesus replied. And the ten church family replied. And the people of God replied. And the altar of the prophet replied and said, get thee behind us. Today we came to declare that let the affliction Go back now. Let me go back. Let me go back. He said, Get deep behind us. Get deep behind us. For it is written that there can only be one God in our lives. And only Him, Him alone, shall we say. My God, the Bible says, and the devil left Jesus. I declare and I prophesy over your life. Somebody, you have taken charge of your day. You have made the devil know his place. You have made the devil know his place. That he doesn't belong in your tomorrow. He doesn't belong in your today. He belongs in your yesterday. By saying, go back, you mean get behind. You mean go to yesterday. You are taking them to yesterday. They were a problem yesterday, but they cannot be a problem today. They were a problem them two weeks ago, but they will not be a problem today. They will be a problem last month, but not in the new month you are going to enter. The devil is a liar. Whatever problem has persisted, has lived in your life, we came to prophesy, we came to decree this is the end. Ah, for it is written, for it is written, get thee behind me, Satan. Let the devil know his place, and you cause the day spring to know his place. He said, has thou commanded the morning before thy day and cause the day spring to know its place. My God, that is why we take charge. We take charge in the morning to let certain things know their place. To let blessing know its place. That blessing, you are coming at this time. Favor, you are coming at this time. Honor, you are coming at this time. As for you, sickness, out of my life. Out of you, poverty. You were a teen of yesterday. Out of out, As for you, disappointment. Get out. Go back to last month, because this month, I don't want to face you, I don't want to encounter you, your place is yesterday, can we lift our prayers one more time, and declare to the devil, that the place of the enemy, the place of the wicked, was in our past, can we relegate them to the past, can we send them one more time, especially sickness and affliction, what is that trauma, what is that issue, what is that tumor, what is that growth, what is that infection, as we lift up prayers, Likadobroski Katolobra, Likula Diakata, let the wickedness be a curse in the name of Jesus. Let it be a curse. We reduce it to nothing in the name of Jesus. Say by prayer, say by fire, say we enforce the word of the Lord that we let the devil, the wicked, the affliction, the bombardment, the issues in our lives to know their place. In the name of Jesus, we declare as God reigns and rules in our lives. Let things that worry our lives become issues of the past. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, can we celebrate the prophet of God? Can we thank God for the life of the prophet? Thank God for the life of the prophet, for the take charge altar, and for how awesome it is. Because it is at this altar that we are able to launch an attack against the enemy. It is, it, it is at this altar that we are able to dictate. There are so many testimonies coming in place. Visas are being released, marriages are being released, healings are taking place. My God, 
all over the place, all over the place. Scholarships are being released, healings, breakthroughs, childbirth, things are happening. Because the take charge altar is a potent altar. The take charge altar is the altar where we cause the devil to know his place. Powerful things are taking place. And I declare that this time, yours will not be denied. You are heard for others. You will hear for yourself. You will experience yourself. I prophesy over everybody under the sound of my voice that today something evil will leave your life. Something that has played your life will become a thing of the past. Sickness will become a thing of the past. Bombardment issues will become a thing of the past. By prayer, by fire, you will lift up your voice and you will look for them. The Bible says you will look for some of your troubles and you will not find them. You will go searching for them and you will not see them. I love that scripture so much. It says you will look for your problems. You will look for your problems and you will not find them. You will look for them. You will look for your problems. I prophesy over somebody at uh, this day that you will look for your problems. You will go searching for some of your issues. You, you will wonder when they left you uh, and you will not be able to even determine it because God is going to do it. He's going to work it by a miracle. Today as you have declared that indeed the devil should go behind you. I declare anything ahead of you. Anything the enemy has programmed into your day, uh, into your today, into the morning, into the afternoon, into the evening, uh, into your tomorrow, into this week, into the next month, to hurt you. I take it out and we send it back in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we are reading from the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 from verse 26. He says, likewise, the Spirit also help us our infirmities, for we do not know what to, we should pray for. As we ought by the Spirit itself, make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And we know that all things work together for good. All things will work together for your good today. I declare all things are working for my good. All things are working for my good. We are declaring all things are working for my good. The Bible says all things work together for my good. It starts with prayer. Is it likewise the Spirit itself help us with our infirmities, with our issues, with our with our weaknesses, with our troubles, with our contentions, the infirmities that you have, the sicknesses, the, the problems and weaknesses and, and contentions in your life. The Spirit helps you. The Spirit can help you. There are things that you can be helped with physically, but there are some things that only the Spirit can help you. The Bible says when it comes to your infirmity, some of your weaknesses, your help is not in the flesh. Your help comes from the Spirit. You can only get help from the place of the Spirit. The Spirit helps us our infirmities. You see, the Spirit also helps us because the Spirit does a lot of things. But one of the things the Spirit of God does is that it helps our weaknesses, our issues, our problems, our circumstances. One of the things that you need is the help of the Spirit. Get help from man, get help from finances, get help from contacts. But you should not forsake the help of the Spirit because the help of the Spirit is the sure way out of your infirmity. It's the sure way out of your problem. It's the sure way out of your issues. Like Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. What are the issues that you are facing? What are the problems and contentions over your life? Your help is not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Your help is not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. There is nobody that has been helped to do anything that did it by the flesh, that did it physically. All people that are doing great, they have some sort of spiritual backing. They either have some myelin, they either have some voodoo, they either have some chance, they do it by the spirit. Don't be deceived. Men that are helped, men that are blessed, have a spiritual backing because the things, the infirmities of man, the flaws of man that prevent man from excelling, whether in business, whether in academics, whether whatever issue cannot be helped physically. Money cannot help it. It is the help of the spirit. That is why the Bible says that the spirit helps our infirmity. Most of the time, the big men, those up there, we are made to think they did it by the flesh. They did it 
they did it by their strength, they did it by their contact. No, no, do not be deceived. They were held by the spirit, they were held by the contact. They had something back in there. Some of them did terrible things. Some of them have done some, some of them have some men of God praying for them. Some of them have some backing, they have some spirit, they have some shakes, they have some voodoo, they have some malam, they have some 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 gurus and some things in their backyard, in their homes, in their offices that they are consulting because the infirmities of man is only the spirit that can deal with it. The Bible says, by strength, by strength shall no man prevail. Your infirmities, your weaknesses will keep you limited, will keep you stuck, will keep you locked down. But it is only by the spirit that you are able to ascend. That is why I know that the Tech Chart family is going to be a blessed family. That is, the Tech Chart family cannot be limited, not by our weaknesses, not by our infirmities, not by our flaws. We will not be limited because we will be helped of the spirit. The Bible said no man can do these things unless God is with it. Unless, and God is a spirit. Unless there is a backing up from the spirit. You can't do certain things. You can, you can do some things, but you can't do certain things without a backing from the spirit. You cannot build certain things. You cannot build business to a certain level. You cannot have a successful life without a spiritual backing up. Whether it is the faith, it is the, it is the spirit of man, it is the spirit of the devil, or it is the Holy Spirit, but you ne of necessity need a spiritual backing because the spirit is what helps your infirmity. And today I declare any weakness, any flaw, any error, any infirmity. Infirmity also stands for spirit, for sickness. Any sickness in your body, any affliction in your body, by the help of the spirit, we command it to be overruled. We cancel it out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Any flaw in your members, any error in your organs, we declare by the prayer of the saints, by the gathering of the Tate Church family, that let such an infirmity, let such an issue, let such a contention in your body be a curse. In the name of Jesus, you need help in the place of the spirit. You need help from the realm of the spirit in order to ascend, in order to act, in order to overtake, in order to excel. Because it is your infirmities that prevent you from excel. So for we do not know how to pray as we ought to. But the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings that cannot be added. As you pray in the language of the Spirit, your infirmities just find a way to disappear. They just leave you. They just leave you. I declare over your life that some infirmities are leaving you. Some weakness, some affliction, some pain, some tumor, some growth, some, some cancer, my God, some migraine, some depression is going to leave you. By the realm of the spirit, we are rooting it out. By the hand of the Lord, we are rooting it out. He said, and he that searched the heart, knoweth the mind of the spirit, because he made intercession for the sins according to the will of God. My God, my God, the spirit will go behind the scene. It searches, it searches, it makes a diligent search. My God, include including things that you don't know, including things that you don't see. The spirit, as a matter of fact, when it comes, it goes behind the scenes. It begins to search. When you pray in the spirit, the spirit goes behind the scenes and begins to search for problems. My God, it is a problem solver. It is an infirmity. It deals with infirmity. So even the infirmities you are aware of and the infirmities you are not aware of and the issues that are time bombs that are taken to explode in your face, it goes behind the scenes. There are issues that we don't know about. Uh, but the devil is a liar. The spirit knows. Uh, the spirit searches all things. Uh, it knows all things. It perceives all things. Uh, and as you lift up prayers today, uh, the spirit is going ahead of you. Uh, is going to your family. Is going to your background. Is going into that office. Uh, and it's anything that has been hidden from your eye, uh, any conspiracy, any manipulation, uh, any programming uh, unknown to you, uh, any arrow that has been programmed uh, unknown to you to be loose against your family. Uh, uh, to be flown and to be targeted against you this day. The spirit that sets at all things is going behind the scene to locate that thing and to deal with it. We are dealing with affliction. We are dealing with infirmities. We are dealing with attacks. We are dealing with contentions because it is only in the realm of the spirit that we are held. It is only the spirit that can help us in this battle, in this wrestling. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That is why we need the help of the spirit 
spirit. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. If our battle was against flesh and blood, then we can do it in the flesh. We can battle with our mind. We can battle with our, with our intellect, with our degrees, with our beauty and with our muscle. But our battle unknown to us is in the realm of the spirit. Therefore, of necessity, we need the backing of the spirit as we enter into the day, as we enter into the morning, as we enter into the office, because there are things going on, but the spirit is setting them out. By prayer today, the spirit is setting through your life, through your finances, and the demonic planting, and the deposit that has been made, that will trouble you in this day, in this week, in this month. By prayer, by fire, we are rooting it out in the name of Jesus. The help of the spirit is needed because the spirit searcheth all things. Hey! Ah! And when the spirit is in charge, then we will know that all things work together. The swing here, that our favorite scripture. All things will work together when you take, when you give it over to the spirit. <laughs> men that are blessed, men that are faded, men that are doing great things in life, they are helped of the spirit because the spirit causes things to work. If anything, can I tell you that if anything doesn't work in the spirit, it will not work in the flesh. That is why, oh my God, that is why people go and do blood money. And even if they sell water, pure water, they make millions. Because it has already worked in the spirit. It will work in the flesh. My God, when you lift up prayers and you choose not to go by the flesh, you go by the spirit, your day will work. My God. He said, after we are praying and cause the spirit to take over our infirmities, take over our day, take over our issues, take over our problems, all things will begin to work. Because once it has worked in the spirit, it has no choice but to work in the flesh. Because the Bible says that we know by faith that the things that we see, the things that we see were made out of things that were not seen, that we know, that we perceive, that we understand, that the things that we see are temporal, and the things that we don't see, the realm of the spirit is what is permanent. So when it works in the spirit, when the spirit works it, my God, it will manifest in the flesh. All things will begin to work. That is why when they work it, when they work it, when they consult, when they when they dabble, when they use all sort of divination, they come out smiling and tell you that, oh, it is just work. It is, it is not work. They have worked it in the background. They have worked it in the shine. They have worked it in their covens. They have worked it in their occultic Freemason meetings. They have already worked it. That is why we have also gathered today. We are working it at the take charge altar. My God, by prayer, we are working it in the realm of the spirit. By God today, by prayers, by fire, we are working that meeting. We are working that contract. We are working that deal. We are signing it in the realm of the spirit. My God, we are signing the scholarship. We are confirming the visa. We are confirming the appointment. We are releasing the documents. We are releasing the property. We are working it in the realm of the spirit. We are declaring your healing in the realm of the spirit. And after we have done that, after we have prayed, we have grown with intercessions and prayer. And the spirit has set all things and work all things. We will know, according to Romans 8 verse 22, that all things will begin to work. All things will not work until they have been worked in the spirit. I prophesy over your life because you started this day with the take charge altar by prayer by fire my god i see it working your day is working your deals are working it is working for your good it is working for your good it is working for your good it has been worked in the spirit it will manifest in the flesh and you will know and you will perceive and you will come to the realization that all things even including your flaws even including the workings of the devil even including that step that setback even including that stumbling block, it will work for your good. It will work for your good. I came to prophesy over your life that this day, the last day of this month, the month of grace, let all things work. Let what has been work begin to work in the name of Jesus by the Spirit. We command a propulsion. We command activation. We command a rolling again. We command a working again. We declare what has been grounded. What has been hijacked. What has been sabotaged? What has been stopped? What has been limited? By prayer, by fire, it is working again in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, we've worked it in the spirit. 
He says, after the spirit has taken over, we will know that all things work together for your good. It will be good. It will be good. It will be good for me. The day will be good for you. The month will be good for you. My God, that business will be good for you. My God, that family will be good for you. That marriage will be good for you. That relationship will be good for me. It will be good for me is the word. It will be good for me. It will work for my good. It will be good for you. Today will be good for you. It is the day that the Lord has made. You will rejoice and be glad in it. He said it will work for your good. It will be good. It will be a good day. I sense it good. There are all sort of good things that must be released. Uh, every good and every perfect thing, it comes from above. It doesn't come from the earth. Therefore, you work it in the spirit and it is released for you. I prophesy over your life. Uh, let today be a good day. Uh, let today be a great day. Uh, let today be a powerful day. Uh, my God, the Bible says, though your beginning may be small, your latter mm. end shall greatly increase. Uh, you are ending this month, uh, the 31st of May, uh, today uh, on the note of a testimony. Uh, it may have started small. It may have started Bad, but by this prophetic word that your latter end that you will end it well you will end it on a good note it will be good it will be good it will be good it will be a good day it will be a good deal it will be a good meeting can you declare it if you are going into that meeting you declare it will be a good meeting it will be a good morning it will be a good afternoon it will be a good evening my god it will be a good fellowship it will be a good time it will be a great deal the contract will go through it will be a good interview it will be a a good discussion uh, will be a good interaction uh, my god will be a good promotion uh, it is gonna be good it's gonna be good it's gonna be good uh, by the spirit it's gonna be good uh, can we turn bad news uh, into good news uh, it's gonna be good news uh, can we turn bad report uh, into good reports that devil is a liar can we turn bad contentions uh, into good ones in the name of jesus we overturn it by the spirit in the name of jesus i declare my life that because you have worked it in the spirit, you will know. Today, at the end of this day, you will know. You will know. You will understand. You will perceive. You will declare. It will be a good day. And because you are ending the month, you will declare that May was a good month. Mm -hmm. My God, it doesn't matter how bad it has been. When you end well, when you end good, <laughs> when you end oh, the end is what justifies the day, my God. It doesn't matter how well you have played. It doesn't matter how well you fought. If you don't fight to the end, my God, and you are knocked down, oh my God, you have lost, but you will not lose. Mm. I don't care how the month has gone. May will be declared. It will go down as one of your best months because today you will end it on a good note. Today will be such a great day that it will make up for all the bad days in the month of this, in in this month. I prophesy over your month, over your life that end this month well, enter into the sixth month with power, with grace, with a testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Don't forget today is midweek, midweek service. It is a time of interaction. It's a time of discussion. It's a time where we, 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 we connect together as a family in our various communities, come to the prayer factory and all our various campuses are having, having their midweek service and connecting.